the vehicles and great service to enhance your ownership experience. Their friendly experienced <laughs> staff will be happy to respond to any questions you may have about sales, service, or parts. Fuller Honda has the whole lineup from the Accord to the Civic to We're the go live. to the all new Pilot. They have the right vehicle for your family. Best of all, this new Honda lineup features some of the best fuel economy on the market, along with contemporary styling and affordable prices. Stop into Fuller Honda today, and they will exceed your expectations from test drive to delivery. Their professional sales team is committed to a no pressure, high integrity approach to your ownership experience. Where they've treated you like family for over Ooh, 60 no years. Have a park drive off the 805 in the Chula Vista Auto Park. You're fine. Have fun with it. It's closed. It's dysfunctional. Is that right now? It's all because of me. Yep. Oh, I'll do it. It's okay. I'll take care of it. The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other hosts or advertisers. Alrighty. Right, good afternoon. This is Vincent Villafranca over here at Keeping It Real Estate. My show, I am a real, real estate agent with Caldwell Banker West. And uh, I have in the studio today Raquel and her dad, Ray. But before I talk to them, I'll tell you a quick story. I just got back from Kauai about a week and a half ago. And so I was kicking in island style for a week and I had trouble you know, the next day when I got back in because of the three-hour time time zone change. And so I adapted to that after about a week. And now I spoke to Ray. He's going to be on the show. Now I'm going back into island mode because uh, he's, he's the owner of an island restaurant located in Chula Vista called Matua's. And uh, so we're, gonna, we're getting back into island mode. We're going to talk about him, his family, the food, and all the food that's there and what's available to the people of San Diego. So I'm here with Ray and Raquel. How are you guys doing today? Doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Ray? Hey, I'm doing good. Aloha, half a day. Half a day. Well, people know what aloha means, right? You know, yeah. that's the whole thing on Hawaii Five O and yeah. all that. Yeah, exactly. What does half a day mean? What is, what is, where does that come from? So half a day is um, like a tomorrow um, version of aloha. So it's a greeting, a way of saying hi and hello. Oh, okay. so it's, it's hi and hello. Yeah. Yeah, so half when somebody day. says half a day to you, you say totomalik, like I'm doing good. Totem you know, totem everything's good. Totomalik. 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 Yeah. Half a day. So half a day. Totomalik. Totomalik. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to say it <laughs> no. right, with the right <laughs> accent. <laughs> and what, what language is that again, you said? It's Chamorro. T tomorrow, no, yeah. tomorrow. Now, um, I was talking to Raquel the other day when I called to remind yeah. you, and I was doing a little research on what tomorrow means, right? And, you know, according to Guampedia, mm -hmm. right, tomorrow is the national, the language, not national, the language of the indigenous people of Guam. It's, it's their language, right? Correct. Right. Correct. Now, um, so when someone says, hey, I'm, I'm Guamanian, um, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm an indigenous chum person that speaks tomorrow? Or is that like saying, I'm American, and anybody could say I'm American if you if you live in America. Well, you know what? It's something new. Um, you know, I, like a, we spoke before, and right. you know, over the last 20 years, <laughs> people calling themselves Chamorros um, are like calling themselves um, Tagalog, you know, like Filipino. Right, right. But when uh, before we used to be called Guamanians since we were from the island of Guam. Right. But the new thing nowadays, if you were raised in Guam. Everybody considers themselves Guamanian. Right. You know, anybody that comes from Guam that was raised there is considered Guam. What if I, what if someone like lived there for two years? Exactly. They Could would they say, say they're Guamanian? They, they probably would. But well, that means I'm Guamanian. Nor, nor, normally it's, <laughs> exactly. But. So I'm, I, I make the announcement today uh -huh. that I am Guamanian because I did live there when I was one or two years old. Oh, yeah. I'm no longer Filipino. I learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> so if you live there, I yeah. can say, hey, I'm going maybe. But I'm not going to say I'm tomorrow because I can't speak the indigenous, I can't speak the language. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I guess I, I just changed my um, ethnicity today. But new, the, the new thing is if you were born and raised 
oh. in Guam, and you were actually part of the ancient Chamorro culture, you're considered Chamorro, which oh. is, that's how they're setting it apart now. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you have to define that, because yes. uh, Hawaii is a melting pot. Yeah. And then you go to Hawaii, and you say, I'm a Hawaiian, and like, you're like, you know, you don't look Hawaiian, dude. You look like someone who moved here a year ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> right? So that's the same thing with... But it's all about the spirit, bro. Oh yeah, you know, okay. Uh, Hawaii, okay. the Aloha spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like 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 any friction between the indigenous people, like from the Chamorros, versus the people who say, "Hey, I'm Guamanian," and I live. There's not there's, there's nothing like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you there's know, always it, some kind of friction. There's right? always something, you know. <laughs> You know, they're not Chamorro. I mean, people say to me, because my last name is Rodriguez, that all, all you guys aren't Chamorro. But yet, you know, my family has been, you know, they were all born, both of my parents were born there. And um, So Rodriguez is not one of the indigenous James no, names of, no. of Guam or being, it isn't, right? No, it's, you know, it comes part of the colonization of, you know, yeah. when um, Magellan went to Guam and they tried to, you know, infringe on our rights and yeah well they actually well i don't want to get into that history. yeah history. nobody wants to get into that i don't want to talk about history yeah. history just is not a good topic yeah um, how do you turn this on i think uh, but yeah like my last name is villafranca uh -huh. and then i say i'm i'm filipino uh -huh. but now i can say i'm Guamanian. Right? yeah exactly because <laughs> i lived there for two years or i don't know if that really counts that but um but yeah, I have them here today in the studio, and it's going to be fun because I don't. I have all these notes in front of me, but I'm not really going to look at them. So because we're just going to talk, because me and Ray, uh, we have like a ton of mutual friends, so I could just talk to him like one of those guys. So it's not a big deal. So I could talk to him about anything. But um, Ray was and a few other people. They were they, they were the owners of uh, Yokozuna's restaurant. Yes. And when did the Yokozuna start? Talk that was back in the late 90s. We opened it up. It was a bunch of friends. Um, right. And we basically wanted to have food that we all like to eat. Like, we all like yeah. sushi. One of my partners is a sushi chef. Oh, we all nice. like Guamanian food. We all sure. like Hawaiian food. Sure. So that's how it kind of evolved into the restaurant. <clears throat> and then the Yokozuna was... Um, came from the sumo wrestler. You know, that's yeah. a grand champion of, su of the sumo wrestlers. That's kind of... How we came up with that oh name. yeah at that's the time right, that's there right. was a big Samoan guy that was the Hawaiian guy yeah right? the that he big was Hawaiian yeah guy. that he was actually um, I seen him. the Yokozuna yeah. for Japan so yeah. that's how we came up with that name so like yeah. you know not not that I'm an expert on sumo but that guy was Hawaiian yeah so he wasn't he the grandmaster of sumo for a long time yeah so you he don't was, have to you probably didn't have to be Japanese to be oh, no. A super sumo guy. No, in fact, there's a. I think there's a lot. There's still a lot of Samoans and Islanders <coughs> that fight within, you know, the Japanese. Oh wow. Community. I remember I used to see that on TV. Just sometimes it would be really big, small guys. Or, but that that was interesting. But yeah. um, the restaurant Yokozunas. Um, what did they specialize in back then? It was sushi, island food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Chamorro food back then. Yeah, it's basically the same. Yeah. You know, we kind of. Um, you know, I left the business kind of in, um, in the um, the mid part of the um, two thousand, and you know, went on to do some different things. But right. um, yeah, it was pretty much the same thing. We did we did Chamorro food. Some of the food we're doing a little different now, mm -hmm. trying to do more traditional. Um, yeah. Rather than trying to do like some type of fusion or some something I, I grew up. With, I think so. that's that's huge because there's a lot of like fusion yeah. places. Like I, there's a uh, restaurant over there in National City. It says uh, Mexican Thai fusion. And I was like, whoa! I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you combine that. But I'd never been there. But I saw all these fusions. But I like more of the um, more of the traditional food because there's less uh, chemi not chemicals, but less flavors. It's more pure, I guess. Yeah. And. Um, so when did Yokozuna's end? <coughs> mm, I think they ended up closing like in 2009, 2010. Oh, oh, that was not too long ago. That was like maybe six years ago. Yeah. Hey, yeah were exactly. you part of it till the end? No, 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 no. I, I left there prior to that. They cha they actually changed the name to Yoko's. Oh, well, I remember yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, Yoko's and then, uh, yeah. and then so, oh, was it was a new ownership? All new yeah, ownership? some new ownership, some not. Some some of my old partners elected to stay, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are, are they still there? Or no, under Yoko's? no, it's closed since. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So um, now you opened up a new restaurant, and how when did that open up? It's called Matua's in Chula Vista. When did that open? Raquel? It opened at the end of 2013, so it's been oh, okay. open about two years. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> and then um, on the food, like, and what is the official name of the restaurant? 
Matua sushi bar and Islander girl. So is it a sushi bar first or Islander food first? Like what's the priority? I, I think it it's same? mostly Islander food, so tomorrow and Hawaiian food. Okay. And then when you say tomorrow food and Islander food, like like what's the difference between the two if there is a difference, I guess? Between what, what but, was like when you see Islander food, is that like sort of like spam masubi, is that sort of thing? Um so for tomorrow food like the pork ribs, chicken calaguin, red rice, okay. potato salad. Um, for Hawaiian food, we have like kula pig, huli huli chicken. Max huli huli salad. chicken. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that like a long prep time? Huli huli chicken. Uh, yeah, I, I it just, could be, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. But you know, that. over the years, you know, you manage to do it express. You know, to oh, yeah. satisfy the not you know. super express, but just fast. <laughs> yeah. Because this is not but all, an express. But all restaurant. of our all of our food is fresh. It's a sit down restaurant, so it's not something you're you know if you decide to dine in, it's not somewhere you're going to get your mm -hmm. food in a you know in a box. It's actually served on a plate. Um, you know, if you look at our website, www.sdmatuas.com, mm -hmm. you can see, you know, how we present our food. Um, but yeah, I think that's what set, kind of sets us apart from all of the other Islander restaurants. Oh yeah, that, that's, uh, that's definitely, a, I'm, I'm trying not to get so much into food now because that's a mm -hmm. gigantic topic there because yeah. we're going to save that for later. Yeah. But um, now if someone wants to go try the food, where do they reach you at again? What's the address and the phone number to reach um, you? The address Website? is 626 E Street, Chula Vista, and the zip code is 91910. Oh. Um, our phone number is 619-427-9090. Okay, great. So they can go there anytime. So you opened up two and a half years ago, right? Two. Yeah, about two years, a little over two years ago. And have you been doing any? How has it been? Is it as people are, are catching on to the restaurant? Is it getting um, bigger? I think especially lately, a lot of people are still finding us, but oh, mostly okay. because of social media through Facebook, Instagram, um, Yelp. That's how I found you guys. Yeah. <laughs> through uh, through somebody posted like we're eating at Matua's and they did a picture. I think that was about like maybe eight months ago and then um, you know so that's that's how I found out about the restaurant so um, now you are focusing more on island food but you also do sushi now one of the things that I want to talk about was now you are a sole proprietor of this restaurant now right well we're it's a corporation but we're a family owned business oh family so that's great so it's a family now who works in the back is it all family or is it just you have employees back there or no 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 it's we have employees i mean you know some of the people work for us at yokozuna's but a lot of them are okay. new a lot of raquel's friends came yeah. and worked for it's us a, you know in the uh, beginning i think it's a lot of our like people we know which oh, okay. help, which uh, makes sense because we're a family business oh yeah so. there's a lot a lot of the employees are probably part-time or something yeah part -time. oh yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. Oh, okay. Some of them go to school still, and you uh -huh. know. So are you Ray? You're there every day overseeing the whole thing. You're yeah, that's your. Well, baby. both me and my daughter are there. What about your wife? She's not there. Or oh she's no, doing, she's oh, got no. her. No, I don't think she would be able to do this stuff. She had her fill from Yokozuna's, I think. Oh, was she working at Yokozuna's? Yeah, she helped out in the beginning. All uh, of our friends uh, did when we first opened. So, um, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I mean, it looks like you're doing really good on, at the restaurant, and, and, and you're you're picking up in business and all that. The first time I went there, I remember, um, I I had, uh, I just I had the ribs. The very first time I went there, and um, at the other island restaurants that I've seen, they don't serve ribs, right? I don't I don't think I've seriously seen them before, right? I think yeah. they do, but I think ours are diff like more unique. Like people mention it to me because yeah. I'm one of the servers there on the floor, so um, they mentioned to me that ours are more authentic. Right, right. To other places. Yeah, and that that's why you guys are here today. It's more more authentic, and it's more authentic tomorrow, not not Hawaiian. It's it's yeah. tomorrow food, which is basically well, Guam is basically an island. It's not like the Philippines where there's seven thousand islands. Guam yeah. is one island, and mm -hmm. so um, pr I would I would say that the culture would be maybe more intact, I guess, because it's one island, right? And it's not based off of like like five different. Uh, things of uh, you know dominating a country like like the Philippines right but yeah it's, it's, it's a lot island. different I mean Guam yeah. is a US territory like right. Puerto Rico so right. you know um, you know when you're in Guam most people <clears throat> speak you know American you know English so it's not like um, you know when you go to some of the other islands like Samoa or Tonga or any of those or it's, it's a little different um, the oh, I, I have a question the name Matuas where does that come from so Matua's, me, it refers to the highest sect of the Chamorros. So um, the people, or the Chamorros are, I mean, the Matua's means um, the Chamorros that were in charge of leading 
like the villages and the Guamian people. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So what we'll do now, when we come back from break, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things. I mean, we could talk about the food in Ely, we could talk about um, Guam, um, we could talk about his family, we could talk about Ray's family and back in Guam, he's going to talk about some, some of that. So uh, we'll be right back in a couple minutes and we'll resume. Having okay. the choice of a crispy chicken so what are you about next? Yeah. Yeah. Four is the biggest thing that rappers yeah. to sing. <laughs> um, oh, let's talk about uh, oh, uh, no, it's, it's four uh, four Remember talking about your family mm -hmm. How can we help you get out? Uh, oh, I don't know you're the host. <laughs> no, 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 I, 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 I didn't organize this one. I didn't no, I know. Let's talk about um, when you first started. Yeah, we'll you want to talk about Uncle Frank's ribs? That's my dad, Uncle Frank. <laughs> we'll talk about. Well, no, we'll talk about when you were younger and you started learning how to cook the family thing. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, the ones who move Mexico are the How long you've been doing this? That sort of thing. Yeah, we can go anywhere we want. We can talk about UFC in a minute. I didn't organize this. No, I know. Participation uh, is the solution. Do chill out, man. Yeah. The <laughs> is the people's I can uh, organize this one. I can organize this one. And they are making a difference. <laughs> the change is yours. How come I can't hear? I didn't want to mess with it because I didn't P want to. What am I just at? He yeah, is Jose yeah, Cunyata, candidate from the PT. We all can't over here now. This okay. Hello. For you and I, for your family hello, hello. as a company. Oh, you won't be able to hear yourself he will make now. The new okay, well, but mess with this right here because I don't want to hurt your ears and I can't do I turn, hear you. Do I turn this way? Yeah, turn it either way. Well, oh, when, when, when it's on. Yeah, when it's on. Okay. Because okay. okay. if I mess with it, it's you, like, and your family, and as a congressman, he will keep working so that you will not have to pay school fees. I'm going to talk about you, Ray. It's for you and your family. You're going to talk about me. They know you are tired of politicians that do not comply with what they promise. 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds. At the Green Party, they strive to comply yeah, to with what like they offer here and now. Oh, was I too far? The it's Green fine. Party He's commits with you to have environmental <clears throat> education in every level, to have a better and safer public transportation system, and to improve the garbage collection system. That makes some sense. Remember, the Green Party complies. We do it all in style. And we're back. This is Vincent Villafranco with Keeping It Real Estate. I'm sitting here with Ray Rodriguez and his daughter Raquel, the owner of Matua's Restaurant located in Chula Vista. Uh, what I love about the restaurant, it has a more of a Chamorro spin to things. It's not just your normal Polynesian restaurant that sells teriyaki chicken. They sell everything from sushi. They sell Guamanian food. You know, all the Guamanians out there know, know, know what that entails. So, but I want to talk a little bit more about Ray and um, what he does and his family and, and what, why he wants to do this. So, Ray, you started in the restaurant business again from Yokozuna's back in the 90s, right? Yes. What were you doing prior to, prior to that? Um, well, prior to that, I was in the real estate business. Oh, wow. I ever another realtor. Yeah, I was another oh, no. <laughs> I actually did a lot of things. I was in the jewelry business as well. So, oh, interesting. Um, okay. I was selling diamonds, doing stuff like that. But. Uh -huh got into the real estate business for a little while and so it sounds like you but the whole time you were probably cooking at home you know doing your thing and making your ribs and all that i mean you were were you, were you a cook back then oh yeah you, definitely i mean i mean more so when we opened yokozuna's but sure. i used to cook i've been cooking for our family since we were um you know since <laughs> they were kids and you know cooking with my dad learning how to do the marinades and all of that stuff so. yeah you know what i remember um because my dad was uh he was a chief in the Navy, and, and back then, um, I think they called them stewards. Back in the 70s, they only allowed um, Filipinos to be cooks in the Navy. You couldn't be anything else. Uh -huh. So um, a lot of them, a lot of my, I guess, uncles and relatives or people who I would call uncle, they'd have a group of 10 or 20. Now they're all 80 years old. They were all in the Navy, and they were all chiefs, and they all were just cook. Yeah. And then uh, whenever my dad would cook during family parties, he, it was just me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. Every recipe was for forty people. Yeah. Like you, like oh, we're cooking Friday, like Friday after Saturday morning, you're cooking, and it's like there's two boys and my mom and my dad, and there would just be food for an army. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, so I grew up just eating like a. Eat like, like crazy. No, like there was no tomorrow. Well, it's embarrassing <laughs> to run out of food. I think, you know, yeah. with, well, like with tomorrows and Guamanians, <laughs> if you go to their fiestas or anything like that, they. Um, they tend to always have a lot of food. Everybody right. comes, eats really well, 
and takes food home. Do they do the, um, like in Hawaii, what they always show the, for the different Hawaiian restaurants, they put the pig in the ground. Do they do that in Guam? No, also? Guam is more putting on, you know, they put it on the spigot and they roast it that way. Oh, so they like put it on thing and they turn it. They, exactly. Like they're not in the ground, that style. That No, that's more Hawaiian style. Oh, okay, okay, that's more Hawaiian yeah. style. Yeah. So um, all these recipes that you have, um, you learn just by... Just being at home, learning from your parents. Again. Yeah, learning as we grow up. We did the whole thing, you know. We because in the you know with the chicken calaguan, we use fresh cal, um, fresh coconut. So we use I don't know what the Filipinos call it. You know the coconut grinders. Yeah. We call it a kumju. Oh, you go like this. Yeah. Well, you can't see the video, <laughs> but you do it like this, thing. like this. Yeah. Up. yeah, exactly. <laughs> My mom used to do that. She'd make this thing called uh, babinka. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then she would sit on it, and I'm like, and there's like, there's it's this round thing with spikes on the end. Yeah. And you do this. Yeah, exactly. My dad, I remember my dad used to make babinka, and I would eat up, the tray would be about this big, and I could literally eat the whole tray. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, it's like eating like, like a gigantic bag of rice. Or, yeah. Or, I mean, it's pretty big, pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I used because my dad was, uh, he was, he was a cook. He, he took his pride. And, cooking and and then I mean, we'd have these little parties when we were at home we'd cook these gigantic pieces of uh, beef called the steamboat I think it was a big piece of beef uh, bigger than a basketball yeah the steamboat round yeah, yeah. we yeah. do those too yeah. I actually just did a couple for a, a steamboat for a catering yeah steamboat round <laughs> yeah I think everybody does theirs different and that, that's yeah. more of a military thing yeah steam, but that's yeah, not exactly. like uh, like bringing it from out that's I just do that in the military big gigantic piece of meat but we marinate ours we actually do oh. a marinade for it we don't um you know, just do a roast and coat it, and so we actually do a marinade. When you one. marinate, do you like put holes in it? I think we we do a little maybe? bit to put um, garlic and stuff like that in it, but right. um, we actually have a marinade that we use that we actually marinate the whole steamboat. Right. Well, let's talk about um, um, what I really like. Well, then, well, there's there's like five things I really like, but let's talk about the rice. Um, in the Chamorro language culture, I guess they have is. This thing called red rice. It's not really red, but it's more of an orange. Yeah. Though, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, where did that come from? Because nobody else has it. That's well, I, I think I think the acholti, because you see it in the, you know, with the um, Mexican food and Spanish food. Right. That's I think true. it originated. For, I think the Spanish influenced us with that. But basically, it's a seed. Mm -hmm. And you extract the color and the flavor out of the sea, you know, through water. I, I notice what I've know. seen the Latino Mexican type rice it's more dry it's dry mm -hmm. it's kind of a drier rice but mm -hmm. the chamorro style is more of a it's not as dry it's more moist yeah. right is that right yeah well they don't use a choti they use more of like a tomato base it's a oh. little different Okay, they don't okay. use a choti. I know they use a choti in some things, but not in their rice. A choti. What is that again? That's like an achoti seed. And um, that, that's the food, the coloring, basically. The, the actual... Well, it's actually the flavoring and the color. Oh, okay, okay. The, that kind of gives it the flavor in the rice as well. Now, I'm looking at, I, I googled on mm -hmm. uh, annieschamorrochicken.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to this website, and I have yeah. the recipe here for red uh, rice. Uh -huh. Now, I understand rice, mm -hmm. oil, pepper, garlic. What is dashida? What what is that? I have no clue. Oh, you don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know what dashida is because we never learned to put dashida in our red rice. Oh, what is this? I don't even know what that is. It's just dashida season. Maybe it's another season that they. Uh, that they I don't know. That's what I was saying. You know, we do more of a you know more of a traditional. Oh food yeah. That, and you know, I think over the years. Do you people, put bacon fat. There's this bacon fat. We actually put bacon. Oh, the real bacon. Real bacon. Well, you know, you cook the bacon first. Right. But we don't do that, um, you know, in the restaurant just because people have some issues with pork and things like that. That actually originated from Yokozuna's. We used oh. to get a lot of customers that were like, whoa, they have pork in it. They didn't, you know. What's wrong with pork? I don't know. <laughs> what do you got to get good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Actually, I eat more pork than, than red meat now. Oh, do you? Because, you know, red meat, for me, tends to kind of just stick there. Mm -hmm. It's like it's heavy. It's very mm -hmm. heavy. What pork is actually lighter, or maybe it's my imagination. It is your imagination. <laughs> no. Is it really? It's actually it red too. <laughs> yeah, isn't it like head lighter though? Yeah. It's like like chicken. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I don't think so, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better go back to the beef. <laughs> I think I better go back, no, go back to beef. No, I'm just joking. I, I would, but but I'm trying not to go back to beef. But oh, I, okay. I do eat. Uh, well, company. I went to uh, Fleming's restaurant. You don't know Fleming's? Yeah, yeah. I went there um, about. 
two months ago and I got a, I got a nice steak there. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I, Fleming's is supposed to be a good restaurant. Mm -hmm. I just, just wasn't into it. Yeah. I, just, I, did, I was eating a steak. I was like, yeah, it's good. But I just was not into it because I guess cause maybe it was red meat. I, I like more pork, chicken, and seafood. I think yeah. that's what my, my thing is now. But um, the, re the recipe to this red rice is just pretty basic. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just bacon, fat, vegetable oil. You guys put bacon in it. Chopped garlic, onions. And is that is that a long prep time or? No, we managed to get it down. You know, a whole lot of it. You know, um, you know, you can't do it in a you know in a rice cooker. You have to do it on the stove. Oh, so it's do you not, do you have to cook it in a rice cooker first or no? Or just you actually cook it all on the stove. Oh, so you put it in there like dry and you just, you just cook it like that. Oh, yeah. there's a there's a way to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's where probably people will probably kind of. Um, lose it and not be able to do it is because they won't be able to, um, you know, do the right recipe or whatever the way they're doing it is. That's what it comes down to. Well, for those of you who have, who have never seen or tried red Chamorro red rice, how can they reach your restaurant again, Raquel? Um, you can call us at 619-427-9090 and our address is 626 E Street in Chula Vista. 91910 is our zip code. Now, if you're tired of white rice, because basically I'm tired of white rice, there's no flavor to it. It doesn't do anything for me. If you want to try red rice, go there. I know you're going to like it. I don't eat a lot of white rice anymore, but red rice is bringing me back on occasion <laughs> for red rice instead of the white. But I think that's a really good rice to try. It's flavored and it has a really, it's not overly sticky. You know, some rices are really super sticky. And it's, like, it's almost like glue. This is not like that. It, it's got a really, really nice flavor to it. But um, but we're moving right along, we're talking about let's talk about chicken. Chicken kiligun. What does kiligun mean? Does anybody know that? I have no idea um, what it means. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't mean. It's, it's just, just a, a style, dish. Maybe? It's one of our um, the main dishes of Chamorro people. Right. So it's um, barbecued chicken that's chopped up. Um, it's made with coconut, green onions, and hot peppers. There's coconut in it really there's a little bit I, to me i can't really taste it yeah i can't the taste coconut it, no. gives it more of a fresher flavor it's not oh. more it's more for texture and oh. than flavor right I mean, you right. can tell it gives it like a fresher i don't know it's hard to um you know explain it unless you actually try it now it does do that. i know the ones i've tried before was is there a spicy version and a not spicy version or or is it they all sort of not? it's supposed to be really spicy because we, that's the difference between us and different Pacific Islanders, right. is we eat very spicy. Oh. You know, that's where the finadani comes in and all of that. Finadani, wait, oh, we're in, that's, that's a whole subject in itself. Yeah. We'll talk about finadani in a minute, but right. we're not, because I like <laughs> finadani now. Now, Kiliguin, uh -huh. now, are, is it basically, um, I'm looking at the recipe here, and again, fit, chicken Kiliguin, you can only get that in a Chamorro Guamanian style restaurant. You can't get that anywhere else. You may they may call it Kiligan, but it's not prepared in the traditional Chamorro way, like how they do it at Matua's. Yeah. Because I've seen it. I've seen it on, on menus before, and it's just like really, it, yeah. it, it, It's it's different, you know. So I'm looking at a at a recipe. So it's chicken, onions. Is there anything special outside of the coconut that's in the chicken Kiligan, or is it lemon, yeah, juice. lemon juice? probably like the, one of the main ingredients. We put oh. a fresh lemon juice in there. You can't use like a bottled <coughs> lemon juice or anything like that. It's fresh. So it's pretty It's pretty basic. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah. You know, freshly grated coconuts. So you yes. have to actually grate it with Yeah, that that's thing. what I was talking about, the comju and all that. You have to oh, grate okay. the coconut and all that. No, that's, that, that's, that's really good. I think, oh, let's talk about it really quick. Tonight we're having a promotion at Matua's restaurant. Uh, it's going to put you buy one Chamorro plate, get the second one half off. It begins at 4 p.m. today, and I guess goes all the way to closing. But that'll be for today only. And if you haven't, you've never tried ribs, chicken kiligwin, red rice, today is the best time to go because we'll all be there. Actually, I'll be there as well. And Ray will be there. When you go there, ask for Ray and Raquel. You can take a Facebook picture with them and, <laughs> and tag them. You add them in. But uh, they're the owners of the restaurant, and uh, they'd love to help you out. And I'll be there eating my chicken kiligwin, ribs, red rice. And uh, after that, I'll probably run about, you know, 50 miles tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but I won't do that. But, uh, but make sure you go there tonight. It starts at 4.30 p.m. Buy one tomorrow plate and get the second one um, half off. 
Make sure you mention um, Vince Villafranca. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to do that in order to get the deal. Actually, I'll be there. You ask for Vince Villafranca. Yeah, you have, you have to present my business card, actually. So yeah. come to me. Like, no, I'm just joking. You, don't, you, don't have to do you have to um, <laughs> buy a house from him or yeah, you list buy your a house, house with him. Uh, <laughs> in case I forgot, I forgot to tell you, I'm a real estate agent. You can always, always reach me at very good 619-972-8798. This month... I am featured in San Diego Magazine. There's an article on me on the real estate section, and I'm a six-year, six-time award winner as being one of the top real estate agents in San Diego for best in client service. I forgot to mention that actually. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sort of an sort of as an afterthought. When you win the award six times, it's like, well, you know, should I talk about it or? Or not, or it's like know. winning an <laughs> Emmy six yeah, times. Huh? Yeah, and now I'm just kind of cruising along and, and meeting people. And um, I've sold real estate in almost every city in San Diego, um, except Rancho Santa Fe. So I admit I've never hold, sold a house in Rancho Santa Fe, but that's okay. But um, but yeah. So when we come back from break, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about sauce. And this is sauce that I can drink straight. I can put it on rice. I can put it on meat. I can put it on orange and I'll eat it. But I really like the sauce. It's called Finna Denny sauce. And we'll be right back in two minutes and to talk to the owners of Matua's restaurant. Thank you. We're almost done. This is John Maybe Feinstein with the a CBS here. Sports Minute brought to you by Ring Central. The two-month grind of the NBA playoffs begins on Saturday, but Wednesday the regular season went out with a bang rather than its usual whimper. Consider, the Golden State Warriors won their 73rd game, setting an NBA oh, okay. record for victories, but were actually overshadowed by Kobe Bryant's remarkable farewell. The Philadelphia 76ers avoided echo the their own 3-year record of facility by one game, going to win 72. In their finale, the Miami Heat led the Boston Celtics 62-38 at halftime, okay. yeah, no and wrong. lost. They outscored 25-5 in the third quarter. Seriously? The San Antonio Spurs so finished so 16 So the video's still live. That's the one we're going to stream on YouTube. The yeah. the Warriors. The That's still live. Right so don't yeah. do anything else. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's, it's on right now. Right. So yeah, it's on right now. It's a DC tradition. I'm John Fox. It's been a day. All right. One minute. Require me to fill out a bunch of paperwork. Negative control. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans is the first on-demand mortgage machine that quickly imports your financial data. You can go through the entire mortgage approval process in minutes. That is fast, like rocket fast. It also works on any internet-ready device, so you can get a Rocket Mortgage at any time or place you choose. Over. Three, two, one. Rocket Mortgage at QuickenLoans.com. Push button. Get mortgage. Rocket. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS consumer access. Dot org number 33. Did you know that Ring Central is the business? <laughs> phone system behind some of the fastest growing companies. Why Ring Central? Because it's a phone system in the cloud that easily grows with your company. Old phone systems are a mess of wires and cables. Adding an employee or office means figuring out that mess, which takes time that a fast-moving business doesn't have. Ring Central gives you a new, better way. Easily add employees and offices. Still Make on. any device Hi, act like yeah. a corporate phone, even right. your own cell phone. Visit <laughs> ringcentral.com to see how. And we're back. This is Vince Villafranco with Keeping It Real Estate. I'm sitting here with Raquel and Ray, the owners of Matua's Restaurant. Uh, it's a Chamorro style restaurant, and they specialize in Guamanian Chamorro food and island food and sushi. And if you want to reach me as a realtor, you can always reach me direct at 619 972 8798. I've been a real estate agent now in, in, here in San Diego for almost 15 years. I'm a war, I've won multiple awards, and I would love to help you out if you're buying or selling a home. So we're talking Chamorro food. Now, we're going to talk about one of my favorite things. Um, I'm a sauce guy. You know, when I eat Mexican food, I just sauce. When I eat Thai food, sauce. Now when I eat Chamorro food, it's Finadeni sauce. Am I saying that right? Finadeni? Finadeni, yeah. Finadeni. Now, that's the... I guess they call it Chamorro sauce. Is that the only sauce they make, or or is there a couple other ones? I think that's like our main sauce that we eat with everything. But there's different versions the, of sauce. Yeah, they do different. More things. spicy or sweeter or what? Yeah, well, some of them we do with um, vinegar and soy sauce. Yes. Or we'll do it with lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice and soy sauce is more of the traditional. Like is it half and half? or like what's No, the, uh, I can't give you that information. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, you would have to kill me if you told me. It's a, it's a secret, man. 
there's people that even bottle it and sell it. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Been a Denny's You got sauce. the Chamorro entrepreneurs out there selling that. So, wait, it's 70% this, 30%. No, no, don't tell anyone. No, it's 40%, this, 60%. This. No, you got to put one lime. Shh, don't tell anybody about the lime. It's actually lemon, right? Yeah, it's a lemon. But maybe juice. the secret might be lime. You just, you just never know, right? Yeah. And I think people have preferences. I mean, there's a vinegar and white onion one, uh, and the salt that they do. Yours. Yours, yeah. I can drink. The yeah. spicier, the mild. Seriously, like I was eating uh, the chamorro plate at home the other day, and, and then and I eat the rice, and I would take a teaspoon of the, and then I'll drink it, rice and two, and I was because I like because I I'm a sauce guy. I just yeah. like, I like the sourness, the lemon, and yeah, it's good with spam and eggs and rice, dude. Yeah. Just throw it on top. Would you ever <laughs> bottle it? Um, no, we wouldn't do that. You could call it matua sauce. Yeah. You know, I guess. Are, are, now, if you go to a restaurant, if, if you go to a, like an Asian food store, can I say I want Fina Denny sauce and they'll have it for me? No. No, that's only tomorrow. That's tomorrow. your, that's, yeah, that's, that's the next level of two is bottling the sauce. Yeah. yeah we'll I think that would be pretty that. cool, actually. Yeah. What, a buddy of mine, when he goes to, he's so addicted to this sauce, when he goes to yeah. different restaurants, like Chinese places, sure. he'll ask them for lemon, he'll ask for <laughs> he'll soy sauce, he'll make his sauce, own he'll ask for hot pepper and make it himself. Well, if there is no Fina Denny sauce, you know, that's kind of pretty good opportunity I would think because yeah. a lot of people don't like soy sauce it's too salty yeah you can't eat soy sauce and then they have the low salt soy sauce low salt soy sauce which this doesn't taste that great because they, they just water down yeah they just <laughs> and water it's a down. lot more expensive dude. they water down they say well this is low salt yeah. they just put like but in it there's, there's no flavor to it yeah but thinner day sauce is awesome um, I guess there's well there, I mean you can find the recipe online but it's not exact to what to what, how they do it, but it looks like there's some sort of um, there's some sort of um, soy sauce, vinegar, jalapeno, chili peppers, tomatoes, and different. Um, well, they call it, they actually call it dananchi. It's like the mixture of different um, peppers 